Hi, this is Craig Stocks, and today I'm coming to you for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk about a quick, easy way to reduce stars and let the, the details of the nebula really shine through. So for the example, we're going to start with this image of the Seagull Nebula in Hydrogen Alpha. And we'll do two things, basically. First, we'll use Star Exterminator to remove the stars. And it's always amazing to me how much detail there really is in the nebula that our mind just doesn't see when we have all of the stars in the way. So we can use Star Exterminator to remove the stars, but it looks somewhat unnatural without any stars. So the trick then is to add the stars back, but reduce the stars so that they're not as, as dominant in the picture and you can find what you think is the right balance between the nebula in the background and the stars in the foreground. So let's hop over into Photoshop and take a look at exactly how you do this. Now I use a layer-based non-destructive workflow. So the first thing I would do is load my original hydrogen alpha data that I stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and then did a, a hard stretch in Photoshop to get to this point. So this is really just my starting point for editing. And the first thing I want to do is remove the stars. And to do that, if you look at the layer stack over on the lower right hand side, you can see that I've put the hydrogen layer which is on the bottom and I've put that into a group and initially it would be in a group by itself and the first thing I would do is duplicate that layer and the easiest way to do that is with a keyboard shortcut command or control J and then once I have done that I can run star exterminator on this duplicate layer and you do that by going to filter and once you've installed it it will show under filters as RC Astro and choose Star Exterminator. Now I've already done that and it would take a few minutes to run here. So instead of doing that I'm just going to turn on the layer that I already have. And that's the layer with Star Exterminator already run and the stars removed. Now while we're at this point we want to capture the stars and the way to get the stars is to subtract the starless layer from the base layer that has stars. And there's an easy way to do that Photoshop gives us a number of different blending modes that determine how that layer interacts with the layers below it. And the one we want to use is subtract. And by choosing the subtract blending mode, it's subtracting this layer from the layer below and all that we see is the stars. Now, we're only going to see this as long as this layer is in subtract blending mode. So we really want to make a copy of what it looks like at this point. So we're going to essentially stamp all of the visible layers into one layer. And again, there's a handy sh keyboard shortcut for that. And that's shift Control alternate e Don't see any change, but what it did is it created a new layer. And now we have just the stars on their own layer. We can turn that layer on and off. And if we come back to the layer that is starless and change that from subtract back into normal blending mode. So there's our layer that is starless. There's our layer of just stars. Now let's grab the star layer and we'll double click on the name and rename it stars. And let's move it up to its own layer. So I'm going to move it out of this layer group and up to the top of the layer stack where it will be on its own layer above the layer stack that has hydrogen on it. And again, I want to put this in a group, so Control G or Command G on a Mac to create a group. And again, we'll name that group Stars. And now, if we put this group into the linear dodge blending mode, we can see that it lets the brighter stars shine through, but it doesn't change anything that's darker than the stars, which the stars are, are the brightest thing on the layer. So I can turn that group on and off, and we can see it with stars or without stars. Now we can really begin doing some editing. If I go back into the layer group that has hydrogen and start on the starless layer, let's add 
a levels adjustment layer and let's start doing some stretching. I'll just brighten that up a little bit and you'll notice that we're stretching just the nebula. We're not affecting the stars. We might want to add another levels adjustment and perhaps stretch it even more. Uh, maybe even another one if we like working iteratively stretch a little bit more. If you're not sure where your background brightness is falling if you right click outside of the picture area you'll get a pop-up menu and you can change the background to black temporarily and that gives you a visual cue of how dark is the sky compared to pure black. And usually you want it to be a little bit brighter than pure black so a very dark gray. Let's go back to our stars we can turn the stars on now but they're still fairly large so let's minimize the stars a little bit and the easy way to do that is to go into the star group click on the stars layer and then we'll add a levels adjustment on top of that and we can adjust the black and the midpoint to change the size of the stars. So typically I would grab the black slider and darken the background and what that's really doing is kind of throttling down the area, that fuzzy area around the stars and making them smaller. We can also use the midpoint slider and make the stars smaller. So usually some combination of these two, you'll find the, what you think is the right balance between the prominence of the stars and the detail in the nebula. And because this is layer based, we can turn the individual layers on and off anytime we want to see where we've been. And as long as we don't flatten the document, if we save this as a PSD or a TIFF with the layers intact, then we could reopen this same document later today, tomorrow, next week, next month, and all of these layers would be intact with all of the settings in place and we could continue to refine our image. So that's how you do it, quick and easy. It lets you minimize the stars and really let the details of the nebula shine through. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under clear, dark skies. Thanks.